Well, this West Coast journey has been all about new experiences here at Gridlife Laguna. For many, it's a new experience on a new racetrack. For some, it's a home track event for the first time ever in Gridlife competition. And for some, it's a brand new racing series here at Gridlife. This is Rush SR. Welcome back to Gridlife Laguna. I'm Kyle Heyer, joined by Greg Kramer. And Greg, something totally new for us, these little sports racers, these Rush SR chassis, uh, a relatively new offering uh, in the motorsports world for a, a track toy or now a wheel-to-wheel -wheel race car at an extremely affordable price. Absolutely, as the folks from Monty Python might say, and now for something completely different. And these are, uh, they are little pocket rockets, could be one of the best ways to describe them. And you could see, uh, you know, fairly narrow, fairly short wheelbase, one liter engines in the back. They really move. They're lightweight, about 145 horsepower uh, at about 1,000 pounds. That's a pretty good power to weight ratio. It's, it, it's comparable to a GT3 car. I mean, that's, you know, that's the kind of performance that they offer up. And the cool thing is, because they're so small, Kyle, you can run them at most of the big cart tracks. Uh, they will fit on and be able to, you know, to drive there. Um, but they also are perfectly capable at a bigger venue like this. Yeah, so these cars are powered by a small 1,000cc uh, engine, uh, and but have a uh, basically a uh, power-to-weight ratio of 375 horsepower per ton, yeah. uh, which is a lot. <laughs> and uh, we should also mention that they are under $40,000, including $7,500 of options, which are mostly related to electronics and systems in the car. But they all come with that uh, one-liter engine. Uh, you can find out more about them on the RushAutoWorks.com website. And honestly, if you're especially from the California region with all these drivers here, they're exploring some more options to race more continuously. This is part of that California Dreaming yeah. uh, uh, event series. They've got uh, their Sonoma event that happened a couple of weeks ago, and then they're finishing that off here at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. Uh, race here is going to be sprint race format, just like GLTC. We're going to have four of these races over the course of the weekend uh, but I don't have any idea how this is going to go, Greg. At least in grid life, I've only ever called multi-make, multi-drive train racing. Never once have I done a single make series, at least not here in grid life. So this is going to be new for me and I think new for everybody here. Absolutely it is. And, I'm, you know, you were talking about that uh, that, uh, that power to weight. But, you know, for under basically under 40 grand, uh, you can get these cars. They have full paddle shift, clutchless up, upshift gearboxes, massive adjustment, on, I mean, Comparatively, on their on their suspension for tuning, uh, they have four pot calibers uh, with 270 or millil um, a millimeter billet aluminum brakes. They stop like you wouldn't believe, um, and they have adjustable final drive uh, through a. Uh, uh, limited slip diff. These things are for real, and they are really quick. And it's Federico Mosconi uh, up on top in the number three in in qualifying with the number two of Michael Schneider alongside. That's your front row here. Uh, Blair Hosey in sec in the second row, the number eight, and the number one of Alex Chang will start fourth. Here we go. WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. For the first time, a single make series in grid life. Rush SR coming to the green flag. Here we go. Green flag flies and racing in Rush SR here at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. Side by side here for the top spot as they head down through turn one into the Andretti hairpin. Could we be three wide into the first corner? Big lockup on the brakes from behind. Everybody trying to get down to second gear to make that first corner, Greg. Yep. Beautiful outside move, just ramped the outside, but ran just a little wide, had to lift, and uh, ends up slotting back into the second spot. So uh, they are out and after it uh, really, really quick here. And you can see, because these cars are so narrow, you can run them three, four wide around a large portion of this track. Here we go, coming up through the exit of turn four, getting ready to start that climb. And it's Moscone still in front there with the green numbering on the front of the nose. There's the red car in tow. We'll have to wait till they come back around to reorder the timing and scoring, but up towards turn number six, a front three breakaway here, and then a bit of a gap back to the purple car. That was the car that had the lockup going into the first corner. They got it all slowed down and pointed the right direction. A bit of an awkward shunt there uh, through the Andretti hairpin, but look at the downforce these cars generate through turn six and a lead battle here into the corkscrew. 
really, really stout. Then a slight gap back to a great battle for fourth. And then there's another gap back to it looks like a three or four car battle uh, behind them. But the first time down through Rainey here at speed. And, uh, you know, they're, oh, really wide by the purple car. I uh, haven't caught that number, uh, but uh, beautiful save. Just hung on to it, but probably cost him. A, yeah, he dropped off by about a couple of lengths. Yeah, this is Hosey in second, by the way. The number eight car has filtered into P2. Now up onto the rumble strips at the exit of 11. Five car spin, final corner. One car turns around in 11. And kind of out of the racing line enough, but you see the yellow flag waving at the top left of the screen there. Local yellow as everyone will ha not be able to pass until they clear that incident and pass the next non-yellow station. And uh, did a nice job waiting, then got the, tar uh, the car turned around. Lost a lot of positions, obviously. Oof. But uh, Moscone, Hosey, Schneider, who had qualified second, slips to third. Chang uh, holding on to that fourth spot. And Sam Kim, who qualified fifth, sitting in that fifth spot right now. Yeah, so Kim is in that purple 153 car at the tail of this. But we're going to have a battle for the lead. I think Hosey's a bit quicker than Moscone. And in the draft, that will be a big key here. We mentioned earlier you can't really draft a lot at this racetrack in a big car. But in these cars that don't make a lot of power and they have a, a fairly sizable wake because they don't have that smooth top roof, they're going to generate some some draft here and it'll be fun to watch they absolutely will and uh, you know obviously whenever you're in a spec series and especially uh, boy that was a wide run by Alex Chang he is pushing hard when you're in a spec series that is a, a by design a lower horsepower a big lockup again by Schneider a uh, little lower horsepower car uh, you know that run all the way from five up into the corkscrew from 11 into Andretti you're going to want to get a little bit of a toe there really wide run by Musk yeah, he's pushing the limits there at the exit of Rainy Curve, but Hosey's keeping him tight, and, and Hosey's been a bit uh, a, a bit less frantic looking than Schneider behind him and Moscone ahead of him, so keeping him in touch here, and maybe if he can just outlast the car ahead. I don't know how long the tires are going to last, if they're going to burn him off in this short race or what, but so far it's been pretty neat and tidy up here up front, and they've actually dispatched Schneider. It's just the top two right now breaking away. Here comes Hosey up the inside for one, but bailed out of it. Yep, just set fast lap as well. Um, and uh, the one thing that I'm noticing, and it's exactly what you were talking about, uh, you know, looking a bit more uh, more uh, tidy, he's not using anywhere near as much racetrack to run as fast or faster than Moscone right now. And so that's a pretty good indicator. Ooh, showed the nose going into into turn four. Uh, that's a, you've got to be way up alongside uh, before that. But he is serving notice to Moscone right now that he's got a little bit more pace. He's going to come after. <laughs> is he flashing the headlights? I saw the it LED strips flashing like there on the nose, trying everything he can just to distract Moscone here on the run-up to six. And if these two start to battle, Schneider's not that far back. Chang, Kim, they're all in discussion here with this front group. I think Schneider may have closed up back uh, just a little bit on them again. He dropped off at start-finish to the tune of about 1.2 seconds, but he looks a little closer than that there uh, as you see him coming back into the frame. Look at this shot falling down the side of this mountain in the corkscrew cup. Ten stories from top to bottom there, and Moscone a little wide there again, but he's cleaner that time through and pulled a bit of a gap on Hosey. I just wonder how far back the draft is going to be effective. I wouldn't imagine past maybe 10 car lengths that you'd feel much of that. And once you're past that draft distance, you can just execute better and drive away. And that's what Moscone is going to try to do up front as the rest of the field streams down the hill. Well, and I wonder if Moscone started with a little bit lower tire pressure uh, thinking he wanted a car that's going to be fast later. And these cars are so lightweight, it's going to take them time to get temp in those tires. And uh, Moscone's car, as he just now sets fast lap, uh, that car might now be coming in for him. This green car is Burgess, the 12th place, number 51, chasing Melnick in the 35. That's the teal and red just up the road. The green and, green and orange, I suppose, as they head up the front yep. straightaway through one. The kink there to the left. And brake lights earlier on... Burgess's car just behind them is Garcia in the number 18, the orange, white, and blue machine. But back to the front, right back on it, and this is going to be this back and forth game. Yes. Drafting up to it, maybe losing the nose in the arrow wash in, in tow. Uh, and then the wings on these cars aren't enormous. They're pretty lightweight and actually kind of hollow, so they kind of shake and shimmy a little bit. You have to wonder in the really high downforce corners how much they can trust it and lean on it, but so far they look pretty glued down. 
They do, and the guy who's kind of impressing me right now is the number one of Alex Chang because he is starting to close up on Schneider and running them down. And Schneider, that last time by, um, had yeah, actually had lost a little bit. He looks like he's really good uh, up the climb and up through six into the corkscrew, and then he starts to lose a little bit of ground, but Chang is starting to close up here. And, ooh, Hosey got a great run through 10, dives to the inside. Here goes Hosey up the inside at 11. Can he hang on there? Crossover spin for Moscone. The leader's around at turn 11. He'll get back underway, back to first gear, punch that sequential shifter back into motion, but he will lose three spots first to fourth just like that. But look at that, that short little wheelbase. You spin, you just spin like a top and get going again. Yep. Did a nice job getting yeah, going did. again and didn't stall out the car or anything like that. That would have put him in a much. fourth. Yeah, ooh, big lockup oh. again from Kim into the Andretti hairpin. And now the battle resumes with uh, Schneider and Chang here. This one hasn't been hot since the opening lap. Yeah, and you could see what happened there when Moscone went around. Uh, he tried to square up underneath Hosey and get to the out of the throttle early, and uh, he just overlit it a little bit, and it snapped around on him. So now we've kind of single filed out the leaders for a moment. Now we're going to see how the gaps ebb and flow. It's 1.6 from Hosey back to Schneider. From Moscone back to Kim, it was about a second at the line. You have to wonder if there was any flat spotted in the tire. Didn't skid for very long, so I don't think it'll be a huge concern. And the cars are light, but uh, whoa, a little wide there for Chang leaving turn six. That's not a corner you get a lot of play with either. No, I mean, it's, uh, you know, you get out on that little green exit strip, and uh, once you're firmly on that, you don't ever want to overstep it because you're right into that gravel. And for these little cars, it'll just park them in a heartbeat. So great shots here from the drone down the hill into 10. And from this height, you don't really see the banking in that turn. It's pretty stout. And you can really, as we've said before, just kind of pitch the car in there and it'll catch and just ramp you down into 11. Yeah, Schneider closed in in the braking zone. We jump back to a bit of a scrap uh, between Garcia, Burgess, and Melnick just outside the top 10 for Garcia and Burgess. So Hosey ran a personal best up front, but Schneider went quickest of everybody and closed into 1.2 seconds back rather than 1.6. So there's a gap close at the 51, little bobble there through turn 10. That will leave him vulnerable to Garcia. Uh, who's in that uh, number 18 in tow there. Well, you talked about Schneider. You know, he may be another one that started uh, with a little bit lower tire pressure, uh, wanting the car to be quick a little bit later in this race because he's coming on, and uh, he has trimmed a lot of that um, deficit he had over the last few laps. He had dropped off pretty significantly and is now, as you said, setting fast laps in this race. Yeah, Show Walter also went personal best. So did Long in the 512. That's down in 14th and 15th place. This 18 car, that's the orange and blue, has Burgess in sight. That's the green and yellow just ahead of him, sizing him up here through turn four, or three, rather. It's a tr tricky section to kind of line up because they have those inside apex uh, anti-cut curbs. And if you try to get a, an early run on exit and you try to really apex tight, you'll bounce these things to the moon. They will not take those big curbs very well. The rumble strip's just fine, but the yellow anti-cuts, I don't think anybody's car here will handle those very no, well. No, you hit those uh, firmly, and it's uh, at at best is going to launch you, at worst is going to break something. And so you've got to be really mindful of it. But, yeah, right now Garcia got a great run through five, up through six. Don't know if he's going to be close enough, Kyle, to try anything up into the corkscrew. But, boy, he is showing intent. Isn't it's it? tough to make a pass in there, too. If you can yeah. get to the left, then you're just on the wrong side of the track for the rest of the downhill. So I don't know that it's a great overtaking opportunity. Schneider closed in again on Hosey. It's under a second. And Chang went personal best as well. So those top three are going to continue to accordion back together at the front of the field while we're watching this battle for 10th. And I'll tell you what. I Yeah, I think that the pace of the attack here by Garcia on Burgess is pushing Burgess up to Melnick. And, uh, ooh, and a big lockup is a big dive move down to the inside. And that was through goes uh, Garcia on Burgess, but Burgess right back on exit. That was a nice launch for the green car. Locked up on the entry, but managed to get it woe down and served him on exit. Now Kim is dropping down the order. The 153, Greg, was uh -oh. sixth and has fallen down to at least 13th, if not more than that. Uh, yeah, it's going to be maybe he hit pit lane even. Yeah, that's – that's oh, well, oh, there he is. That's the problem. That's on driver's left entering turn 10, I believe. So that's after rainy curve. So that puts Melnick up into ninth, Burgess 10th, Garcia in 11th. Oh, wobble yeah. on the brakes there. That's for the lead, Hosey and Schneider. <laughs> they, are, 
<laughs> pressure here is starting to ramp up. Again, these short wheelbase cars, they're not going to take a lot of sliding and slipping. They're not going to balance on the edge of control very nicely uh, beyond a certain slip limit. So you have to be conscious of that. They are downforce cars at the end of the day as far as uh, the power and weight is concerned. And probably the most critical skill to have in these cars in terms of driving them really fast is quick hands. Absolutely. Because these short wheelbase, they just step out really, really suddenly and, and see what happens. That was, I think that's checkers, Greg. I think that oh, was wow. checkers. Okay, and yep. coming back to it, didn't catch the white. But Hosey on top of the order there. Schneider just nine-tenths back was in tow with a strong chase there. Maybe a couple more laps he could have had a shot at him. But Chang, Moscone, Madison, Robichaud. Uh, Glurloff, D uh, Deganez, and then Melnick and Burgess, the rest of your top ten. Uh, pretty interesting fight, first one out. It really was, and who knows what would have happened had we not had the spin by our pole sitter, uh, Rasconi. But, uh, you know, to me, Hosey uh, got the memo, and on that last lap, reset fast lap, uh, to protect that margin over Schneider. So, uh, great piece of driving. I mean, Hosey did a couple of things right, uh, didn't he? He uh, pressured big time, got the leader to spin and then was able to withstand pressure from a fast closing Snyder and respond uh Hosey that was a really good race yeah and, and really well executed and if you have to feel for Moscone had such a yeah. strong start and then just the slightest of slips in turn 11 looped it around got back rolling still steals the top five and that will benefit him in this multi-race format to stay up near the front but uh, just have to give a shout out to the drivers here first race like this at a grid life event and other than the spin that we saw uh, pretty clean and tidy, I think. Clean, quick, I mean, and using all the track, uh, really pushing hard. Question